Hey everyone, welcome back to the Cakeman Entertainment. In today's video, I will be reacting to The Legend of Vox Machina Season 3, Episode 5. I have reacted to all the episodes before this one. You can check that link out above. Um, once again, unfortunately, my brother is still not back from his work trip. He's been away for about a week now, so I've gone through the first five episodes with him. But I may well react with him as well for the other episodes, um, just to get his first reaction. He hasn't seen anything past Episode 1. So yeah, he, he really enjoyed that episode and we both really love the series a lot. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. And yeah, last episode we got a decent amount of hell. We got to see what it's like and yeah, Pike had her development episode. And I really like how they cycle through the characters. Like each one of them gets a episode more specified towards them. Uh, Percy obviously had his already and now yeah, Pike has had hers. I'm sure the others will have theirs too. And it really helps with their character development and we get to learn more about Pike and there was a little bit of lore dropped there here and there about the past about the possible future and yeah we, we see that there's a lot of groups like Vox Machina that have sort of been led astray and yeah the group have finished and as we know even in life like groups generally don't stay together like whether it be singing groups uh, like inventor groups whatever it is something brings them apart because when there's multiple minds together, yes, it can work for the benefit of the company or whatever it is, but there's always going to be clashes. And if those clashes can't be resolved, well, there goes the group. So, uh, yeah, we'll get we will get to see what happens here. Um, before I get into it, once again, I'm not a Dungeons and... Well, you can say I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons fan because I have not played the game once ever, like in my life. Um, I don't know anything about the lore. Everything I know is from this show, so... And, and I love this show. I love you guys. Um, you guys have been brilliant in uh, welcoming me and my brother into the community, answering all our questions without, yeah, without ever like judging us or anything, which is, yeah, it's really good to see. And um, yeah, once again, if you like my reactions, be sure to like, comment and subscribe and I'll get into it now. And partnering them up yeah, together led to them being tires. romance. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> oh shit. Are these two stronger than the members of Vox Machina? Seems like they are. Because we know they're on the Council of Taldore. Woo! Okay. Jeez. Well, we know who the male in this lesbian relationship is. <laughs> Oh, she, she's still alive. I guess it makes sense there's snow around. It's very softened her fall. Oh shit, Vargo. Oh yeah, Vargo is still here. Yeah, he's looking for her now. <laughs> How do you actually... How did they kill Umbrasil? Oh, they stabbed him in the eye with the vest... with, with uh, Myth Carver, right? But they needed they were getting like slaughtered for most of the episode. Roger, would you stand by if Percival's life hey. Let's continue. <laughs> you could have fooled me. Yeah. <laughs> That's so right. Make a fair point. <laughs> They're not doing too good. This dark side is coming after them. I wouldn't do that either. <laughs> this is like Vorigal's habitat, the snow. Actually, I want to ask, okay, with Vorigal's smell, is it just him that has that like extra sense of smell? Or do all dragons have that? Because I noticed they like expand on it a lot with him. They specify it. Oh, is he purposely making it even colder here? Yeah, you don't need a microscope to have a look at Borogul. <laughs> I can see what they're talking about, the thin ice, but if they shoot the thin ice and shoot him underneath, can't he just fly away regardless? Well, he asked for them to fight back. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, 
shit. What's he gonna do? Shoot for the eyes? Oh, he's triple scoped in. But Vorigal's not just gonna fall and drown, I mean. Come on. Dragons don't die that easily. No way. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah, no. He'll give you five seconds. Has anyone done like a power scale of Vox Machina characters, like in general? The gateway. Right, right, impending doom. Yeah. Gotta open that before your mates are all killed in hell. <laughs> we'll keep him outside, sorry, he'll come inside. Holy shit, look how many demons are coming. <laughs> yeah, has anyone done a power scale of Vox Machina? Like, not just the group, but everyone? I feel like that'd be a huge... That'd be pretty cool. A huge power scale to see who's the strongest character, weakest. Everyone has their unique abilities, though. What? Oh, Grog! Dude, this... Demon or whatever he is, powers just keep going. And now shoot it back. Oh shit, that plane is OP! Damn! What? Oh shit! <laughs> oh no, she's bald now. Wow, that didn't keep him down for long. Oh, are those two gonna fight each other? Vorigal and that demon? That's a fight I'm willing to see. Oh, we are gonna see that. Let's fucking go. This is cool. What is that thing? Yeah, just leave them. Just run. Just run. <laughs> oh, shit. He just ripped Vorigal's tongue out. Oh, this demon is... Destroying Vorigal at the moment. Dude, they're gonna destroy this whole realm. That's what I'm saying! I'm the audience. Grog is the audience. This show is amazing. Oh, sh shit. Oh, it was like a WWE move. Oh, shit. Fuck, that was pretty cool. That was a really cool battle. Nice roar from Vorigal too. Jeez. Oh, we know how strong Vorigal is now. No, he's not. But he is a bit injured though. Oh. Oh. Well, this is how you beat a dragon, eh? If they can. Keep targeting that chest. No, no, don't let him go now. You can beat him. Nice, groggy. Yeah. <laughs> Dragons are stubborn, as we know. Oh, they got his heart. Fuck, did they just beat Vorigal? <laughs> nice work, team. Holy shit, they beat Vorigal. Ah. Uh... Now they're turning into a cute couple. <laughs> Thorak is gonna have to do it himself. Oh shit, they already hatched? <laughs> oh, that was a. That's probably my favorite episode of the season, I'd have to say. I mean, the action in that episode was insane. We got to see. Vorigal and that, I don't even know what the demon's name is, but I'll just say the demon, that huge demon thing. They fought, and that was a very good fight. Like, to be honest, they were quite evenly matched until Vorigal eventually got the upper hand, and we saw that Vorigal is slightly more powerful. But that lay the way for Vox Machina to take advantage while Vorigal was a bit injured, and they did kill him successfully. Fuck. It was a. Yeah, I mean, I loved when Grog was like. 
uh, this is so cool or something like that when we're watching them fight. And I was just thinking that like as the audience member. So yeah, that was an amazing episode. I really enjoyed all the action and I felt like it was building, like the first four episodes were building to some big fight and well, we got it. One of the dragons, another one of the dragons is down. So two of them are down, there's two left and Raishan is, we don't really, I mean Raishan is just in it for herself, let's be honest. She's not on Vox Machina's side, but she's not on Thordak's side either. At least that's what we think at the moment. And I think Thordak is going to have to get more involved later in this season because there's not many dragons left and he doesn't have many allies. Anna Ripley is there, but Anna Ripley is also in it for herself. I think she's just using the dragons at the moment. Um, but big dangerous thing, Thordak's spawn is hatching. And that is not good for anyone. I, again, I want to ask the audience or you guys, like, how does Thordak have children? Who's his spouse? Like, do, Or does he just, like... Um, bring babies here like with magic is that how it works I i'm not sure how it works in dungeons and dragons but i assume he has to have a mate right well uh, yeah we'll, we'll just have to maybe they'll explain that in the future episodes um this was also more of a kima and allura episode we got a bit more bonding between them and percy and vax ah sorry vex percy and vex were sort of yeah, they're like teetering, tattering, whether they should be together or not. I'm sure they'll be together eventually. Not yet, but yeah, watching Kima and Allura, I think they got more inspired to be together, possibly. You just never know. Because, look, they don't want to be together because of the risks they might take, like, might, like, um, disadvantage the team or sabotage the team in a way. But you know what? I think regardless whether they're together or not, that will happen anyway because they obviously have feelings for each other. So as they said, like, even if we're not together, we can't stay away from each other. So they're going to be together at some point. I can just see it. And I like how they're building it, like, slowly. It's a bit, like, t like tipping on the edge at the moment. But it's, it's, it's cool to see. And, yeah, once again, the monsters, the monster battles, like, it's everything you want to see, isn't it? I... I can I feel this show is coming to an end. You can see with Thordak, but there's so many like characters out there. There's so many bad guys. I bet that they could like go to that demon, that torment god that they mentioned last episode or whatever. I hope this show goes on like forever. Forever would be a good thing, but if it goes on for like a bunch of seasons, and I don't even mind if we don't if we switch teams, go to another like group or something. Like there's so many things they could do in this franchise. They should they could easily branch out here. There's so many unique aspects. But again, I'd like them to stay true to the content and true to these guys who make this show. Like they need to oversee all the different projects if they can. And I, I hope this show is very successful because it deserves to be. You can tell I'm not even a Dungeons and Dragons follower at all. Like I never played the game, but I can see the love that's been put into it. Each character is very unique. Even the side characters all have their own stories and they love putting cool monster battles in there too. The animation is pretty good as well. So the music and yeah, every everything you can see is done with love and appreciation, which you can't say the same for some other franchises. I know like Star Wars comes to mind. I'm a huge, huge Star Wars fan. And a lot of the recent projects have not had the love and thought that you'd expect a fan who makes it to have. Which you can tell they're not fans. They're just doing it for the money or that it's a job. Well, in this case, you can see it's not a job or money. It's their passion project and they just happen to be getting paid for it. So, yeah, uh, full kudos to these guys. Like, I hope it keeps going. And, yeah, again, let me know in the comments below, you Dungeons & Dragons fans, are you loving this series as much as I am? I hope you are. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.